Hello and welcome to the Daily Brown Bag. Today we're going to be talking about Google Local and your business. I'm Chad Hill and I'm joined by Adam Stetzer. Hey, good afternoon, Chad. Welcome to the Brown Bag. Yeah, Google just rolled out some new guidelines for its local pages and maps. And these are the guidelines you know, representing how your business is seen on Google via My Business, Google My Business, or Places, or Pages, lots of names for these. But I um, want to go through these, Chad, and then have some discussion. Um, you know, Mike Blumenthal provided a, a pretty concise list of the biggest changes, and these are pulled directly from uh, his post, so I want to go over each of these. Uh, first is that descriptors of any sort are not allowed. You must use your real business name. I know people try to often game that a little bit uh, for positioning, but that's just not going to be the case anymore. Categories should be more specific. Categories should be the more specific category and not the overarching general category. Many of you will know when you choose, there's the overarching and then there's the more specific one. You need to be in the more specific now. There is now increased name and category consistency among multi-location chains. That's something that they're working on. Two or more brands at the same location must pick one name. Uh, and if different departments are to have their own page, they must have unique categories. So it seems like they're tightening up here, Chad, a little bit on these uh, different ins and outs. Uh, practitioner pages, a whole other uh, ball of wax, in a multi-location practice should have their name only and not the name of the practice. Uh, solo practitioners who are just solo practitioners can use the format of practice colon and then the practitioner. And virtual offices are not allowed unless staff. So these are some of the new rules and changes coming out from Google. Uh, Barry Schwartz has commented and weighed in on this chat and he wonders uh, if Google will actually be able to enforce these new guidelines. The local maps area has always been a bit like the Wild West. What are your thoughts on that? Well, Adam, listening to you go through those, it, it is like I had to sort of think through each of those two or three times because it's complicated. Um, and these, there, in, in any case, any day of the week, if you look in the search results today, you're going to find people that are ranking very well who are violating um, pretty much um, more than one or all of those different um, categories. So this is a big shift for people, and it's going to take a lot for people in our business to start to convince people that they should follow the, the new guidelines and not sort of stick to what worked a year ago or more. Um, so there are a couple pieces of advice we have here and things that, uh, again, nothing new, but just want to reiterate what you always should start with. The key thing in what Google is really trying to do is to make the most relevant um, search results for their users. They don't want to show a page for a results with a bunch of keyword stuff, business names, and so they're really trying to pare this down to what you see in the results is the same thing you would see if you were driving down the street, what's on the front of the, the, the name of the business itself. So, um, so uh, you know, kudos to Google for trying to really make this a, a more useful experience. The, always this starts with the website. You want to make sure that your website um, you've, you've optimized your website. You include those categories you mentioned, Adam, so not the broad overarching category, but make sure that if you have specific types of services you provide, make sure you're getting those into your website with pages um, that specifically mention the types of services that you do. You need to do a full on-site analysis of your website, something we always start with. You want to make sure that the name of your business is um, in the header or the footer. Your phone number is also in the header and footer. You're using the same phone number that you're using your Google local page on your website, you're not using different tracking numbers, all that information needs to be synchronized as much as possible. You want to claim um, your local listings, and again, you know, as part of our service, we use we claim manually Google, but then we use Yext to uh, actually claim other local listings out there, but you want to manually claim Google, make sure your information is complete there. Another thing that you that's important, and there are were days of astroturfing and things, you want to try to encourage your users to lead on, leave online reviews. That can be done by uh, including that in different email correspondence that goes out. For, for example, a monthly newsletter, you might want to say, review us on Google. You can add it to your website. Some people, even after people come visit their business or make a purchase, they'll send an email out and in sort of the, the, uh, the footer area or the, um, the sign off of that email, they might say, uh, please, if you've been satisfied with our service, please come to our website and or come to go to Google Plus and review us. So these are all smart ways to en enhance or increase the, the value of your local listings and, and make it easier for more people to find you. Uh, I think the final point as we uh, finish this up here is that social still does matter. So you want to make sure that you are using Google Plus, which has a social component. So if there are opportunities to update information in your Google Plus profile, as well as any of your other social media accounts, you should do that because that just sends reinforcements that, hey, you're in business and, um, and people, of course, the audience out there looking 
are going to see that and say this is a well kept business that's up to date and still open. Well, that's a whole lot to consider. That's our coverage on this brown bag for the updated Google guidelines for their local pages and for Google Maps. If you find any of these confusing, we'd love to hear from you. The whole HubShot team is here, and we'd be happy to assist you. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to our video series, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.